Well, happy Thursday, winners. I hope everyone is doing well. 2020 is your year. Very special recording today coming at you guys. I've got live here on the air with me. I've got George. I've got George's friend who's a longtime crypto developer of about eight years in the space, who's now working very closely with the Theta team and uh, actually very responsible for a lot of what George is gonna be sharing with you guys today with Gpool. Um, his name is D. As you guys know, we only use first names around here. If it's a real name, that's fine. If it's not, that's fine. So uh, we're gonna be talking with D today. And uh, guys, I'm kind of, you know, technology from this side of it on the developer side is not really my forte but uh, I am learning a little bit at a time through George. I'm not, it's not my aspiration to become a developer or a coder, although I have a ton of respect for those guys and I think that's our future on planet Earth. Um, but uh, George is a little bit more into that space. And so guys, I'll be here and I'll ask a question or two, but mostly I've set this up for, for George to kind of come in here and make an introduction to everybody. I will tell you that uh, my personal Theta tokens which is a pretty large position, is currently delegated through Gpool, and it was a very easy process. Thank you, George, for putting together a video on that. And so anyway, without any further ado, I'm gonna turn this over to George. George, thank you for being here, and as well, Dee, also thank you for being here, guys. Good morning. Thank you, Jay. Uh, it's it's great to be here, and thank you, Dee, for joining us. I, uh, I yeah, appreciate absolutely. that a lot. And so, you know, today we're really going to just kind of cover Theta. You have a much broader background on the project than I do. And when we've talked in the past, I've been like, wow, that's, um, that's really exciting information. And uh, it kind of got me stoked, um, you know, going further. So if you want to share a little bit of your background, um, anything that you, you know, might want people to know, um, go ahead and and share, and then we'll kind of move on to uh, uh, the G Pool uh, project. Sure, yeah, thank you both for having me here today. Um, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, um, so a quick more broad um, summary of my background because we could be here for a while. Um, <laughs> I, I got started in crypto uh, 2012, and you know, I, I won't tell you my, you know, classic story of, you know, the moment I became awoken, you know, once I had read and really discovered what this space was uh, was trying to accomplish. But uh, needless to say, I dropped everything and transitioned as quickly as possible. Um, so I, I wanted to absorb as much information as I could in this space just because of uh, the vision that I could see this becoming. Um, I was around when BBS as Baltimore services transition to the internet. And when I saw that happen, I was just a bit too young to capitalize on helping the movement. Um, and this one, uh, I think is probably going to be, well, it's going to be at least to that magnitude, if not more. Um, so I really had to learn as much as I could. So I started on different code bases, you know, from Bitcoin code base to, to Monero code base. And I won't drop a bunch of names, but anyways, a bunch of different code bases and projects. I just soaked up like a sponge and um, have been helping out from the community aspect for that whole stretch of time, sat on some boards, you know, worked from behind the scenes, worked from the, the community end of things. So, um, so yeah, so then uh, I came, came upon um, Theta um, and man, that light bulb, I couldn't, you know, it was just that moment that I had and I was like, this is what this space has been needing. On top of all of that, you know, the timing is just so critical. Um, you know, not even to make another reference to the dot com, the dot com um, situation, but it was, it was about timing, and and that's what we're going to see here with crypto. Is is I feel like we're right on that that precipice. Um, and if I feel like if Theta would have came along two years earlier, like I've seen some other great ideas and some great ideas poor execution but some great ideas with good execution and timing just wasn't there for mass adoption but man i just think that this is like the trifecta here i think we got a, you know i know we've got a team that can pull this off and you know i think that their timing is right and you know i think i think the use case is just i mean it's it's absolutely it's it's you can't compare it um you know yeah 
so yeah, that's that's when I had decided um, to support the project. I then evaluated where I potentially thought the first community interjection um, was necessary, and um, you know, once the two coin system was out, with you know, you know, as we all got published information. Um, I then started to see where we were heading and what we were going to need was was a pooling service and a safe one at that because uh you know I've seen a lot of these things ran through telegrams or through you know slacks discords and that's just while it's great and it's great community service it's just there's just way too much scammers out there there's it's it needed a platform you know what I mean yeah absolutely uh, a place to land, a real place to land instead of, um, you know, something that right. may or may not, because it, it, there are a lot of scammers out there that people do fall for, and you don't know who's real. Yes, absolutely. And and that is the unfortunate double-edged sword in crypto is, is that um, some of the best guys that I've ever worked with in crypto, I don't know their name, I don't know where they live. I, I, you know what I mean? But I would trust them with my dog, my, my family, you know what I mean? Like, so I, I guess I'm just saying that, you know, it's, you know, it, you, you need to have a physical presence. You need to have a community conglomeration that's built out properly. I mean, we really took our time with security and, and, you know, I, I don't know if, um, if we made it clear or not on the, um, the about page, um, but that system um, that we designed there, that, that's patent pending. And it's not because we want to license it. That's so, it's further from the truth. Um, we wanted to patent pend it because we wanted to make sure a bank didn't come along or, or you know, somebody come along and try to claim it as their own model. And us then have to either pay them licensure or change, you know, the direction that we had it. But um, the system that we built here um, is, we have luxury that even an exchange does not have when it comes to security and the potential that you can, what direction you can take it in. Um, mm -hmm. With an exchange, they have to have a, what's called a hot wallet where they have a functioning um, float of, of liquidity that they can uh, distribute for withdrawals. And on the pool, we don't have to have that hot wallet. So we can keep them all cold storage. Um, as you know, you might know, Coinbase has 98% of their supply cold storage. Um, and it's got to be proper cold storage. Um, I, uh, well, commercially available hardware wallets are great for the, uh, you know, the advanced crypto. Um, yes, there's a, there's a Coinbase. Yeah. So they, they, do, they go over what, you know, they have in cold storage. And they actually, they do, from what I know, I've never been in their um, establishment, but they do do cold storage proper. You know, um, <clears throat> I don't want to get too, too in depth with technicalities, but. Um, Let's just put it this way: it's a, it's a lot more advanced than just a, a hardware wallet. Um, just because um, you know we won't get into um, how modern CPUs are even vulnerable and so on and so forth. But anyways, um, it's <laughs> it's quite advanced. Um, let's just put it that way. I, I guess I could if 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 I could paint a vision for the the um, the viewers looking at this diagram um, as we go to cold storage that is not stored on a computer. Um, that 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 is actually what could be considered as being on paper and even more so it's it's really it's only created when we need it to be created through the mnemonic so the mnemonic is is all that exists um, and not in physical way to where it could be burnt or seized um so um it's it, we have redundancies of redundancies to make sure and you know um it, the coins aren't the private keys are not physically sat anywhere um, in existence until they need to be. So that's that's one of the benefits to crypto that you can leverage is, is that um, you can have it pretty much in thin air until you need it to be um, by memorizing 24 word mnemonic. So yeah. we have a board yeah. that has it. Um, so we have those redundancies built in and um, it doesn't live on any physical device. <clears throat> okay. So. You, you know what? Let's let's back up just a little bit. And how about sure. if you talk about um, about G pool? Some people um, listening to this may not have any clue. I mean, I've been talking about it for a while, um, posted some things, but some people may be like, "What are they talking about? What is G pool, and why would I use it? And um, how does it how does it work with with Theta?" 
Sure, sure, yeah. So um, we were excited because we were able to um, offer both a custodial and a non-custodial path. We, we would love for it to be all completely non-custodial. Um, what that means is, is that the users can hold the coins, their control in their wallet and earn rewards, just like if they were running their own guardian node. Um, rewards straight on the blockchain. Um, so that's what's referred to as a non-custodial where we don't hold custodian of your coins um, or the private keys. Um, then there's also the non-custodial. So Theta, um, Theta Labs, um, who, who writes the code uh, for Theta right now, um, they, um, they have a minimum threshold of 10,000 coins. So if you have the 10,000 coins, we can then enter into, and I can go more into depth of how we enter into delegation here in a sec, but um, the non-custodial um, is, is, is on chain and you hold, hold it in your wallet, but the custodial, you move on to G pool in a sense, but once again, it goes to those cold storage wallets. It's not even going onto the website. Um, so someone could come in and all they're gonna get is basically the, the HR department. They're gonna get usernames and, and you know email addresses. Yeah. That's it. Um, so there is no coins held physically by a device connected to the internet. Okay, great. Um, so, so what you're really, um, well, why did you start G pool? I, I, well, you may have gone over that a little bit because there really was ne a place needed um, to land because right now I have the uh, guardian monitor. Yes. By the way, do you know who did this? Cause I know when we were part of the, the beta program, this kind of evolved and it wasn't uh, out of favor. Yeah, that's, um, so that's QE, um, uh, another gentleman from the um, community, and we're actually working with him as far as funding. Um, so if you take a look, because we don't take fees or anything, and I'm sure we could get into that more, but we have a Patreon, and on that Patreon, it has just, you know, three tiers, and once you move in from the $5 tier to the $10 tier, you're then helping us collect some funds to redistribute to some of the other uh, community projects. And this one we found was such essential piece that it's our first one that we, you know, we're liking, you know, that we're supporting. Um, and then there's a $20 tier and that helps build out like an app for G pool and, and so on and so forth. We have a lot of different uh, visions of where we would like to take it. I can probably um, bore you for hours of things I have planned for Theta if we can indeed, you know, Fund Get it funded, it, you know. So yes, yeah. Because right now you guys are the number one uh, guardian node holding more than twice the the next person down. Yes, yes, um, which is great to see. And you know the thing um, when you see that number, uh, you got to think uh, centralization, and that's what I always think whenever I see that number. How centralized is data because of the pool being around? Because you know, not saying that. Um, I will ever take it down, um, but we do have some solutions that we have been working on while we worked on the design of the pool to help with decentralizing it. If the pool were ever to get into a territory where they had a majority um, seat. So guardian nodes, basically each guardian node has, you know, their vote. They get paid proportionally to how much they stake, but their vote is counted as a guardian node. So yeah. You know, uh, G pool, we could split that up and spin up a bunch of guardian nodes, but to be honest with you, that's not the, the best practice for a decentralized network. Um, so that's why we held them, pulled them in one. And as you can see, I believe we were up to, and we were past a thousand guardian nodes the last I looked. And, you know, there are some that, that are needing some assistance in the community. We're talking about how we could build a platform for outreach because we're seeing some instability with some of them. Um, not in the scary sense, but just, you know, to help maximize their rewards as well. Um, and, uh, you know, we, so we potentially have, I believe, 3%, yeah, 3.2% of this total staked, and there's over a thousand guardians. So our vote is one of a thousand, um, yeah. you know, right now. So it's, it's something that we are, continuously keeping our eye on because you know the pool was great 
in a sense that people are going to pull their funds together. Um, it's inevitable. Um, and, you know, but the, the, the big thing was is A, we got to make sure that the pool's done safely and properly. B, we need to make sure that we're an advocate for decentralization. And, and, and C, the big thing is, is that these participants that we help have a have a very important role in a network um because we can run a guardian if we have ten thousand or ten million um so their important asset to the security of the network which is why they earn the rewards is voting on the protocol so i don't want to get too far down and if you don't want to because that's a pretty long you know rabbit hole but the the protocol is going to need to be voted on here and yeah. You know, we need to make sure that it's not just the tech people and the people that can see things one way. We need people that might not have a stable internet. We need people that, you know, more artistic, you know, and, you know, the pool is going to help bring protocol votes to such a mass amount of people that potentially might never have been able to cast their vote a different way. And, you know, having every single theta vote is a very important thing. And you, you got to make sure that they have skin in the game to vote and that's by delegation or running a guardian note so we wanted to make sure that people are going to have their chance to vote so so the service you know the platform g pool is it's <clears throat> building the system out in collaboration with uh data labs you know actively yeah. so we're going to be on the, the front edge and we're going to be ready for that first vote um you know and, and you'll tell so, us when when they're going to release sure. that part of it yeah, too. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And and you know um, that's part of the discussion actually right now. Um, there's a small community uh, group of us that have gotten together over the years. Um, well, yeah, two years I think is when you know. Shoot, that's been a long time, huh? But um, so great to see uh, you know um, all the development that's gone on. Um, so anyways, um, so we have a smaller group of community members that were of the original first 100 Guardian on Testnet and so on and so forth. And we were just talking yesterday about the voting and platforms and how, you know, uh, lobbying and, and so on will go for votes, um, education on both sides of the argument and making sure that the vote is a dynamic vote, meaning that you can switch it. It's not a one time vote. And the importance of seeing that vote on a constant basis. You know, uh, sometimes people don't get motivated to vote until they see that a decision is going to go the opposite direction that they would like it to go. So yeah. if we have the vote just happen over a course of a few hours, there really won't be enough time to react to properly educate. So we're yeah. trying to have input that the vote potentially should be cast and be able to be changed, you know, maybe throughout the whole month or you know, however long they all decide is a proper length of time. Okay, and can you tell, because some people are that are listening to this will be technical, some of them will have no idea what a vote means. Um, okay. They know there's a vote in 2020 in November, but why would someone want to vote on Theta? What, what is that going to um, do for them, or what are they going to be voting for? Sure, sure. So, I mean, I guess there's a, a very... Um, classic example at this point at least um where it's the inflation rate of t fuel uh, rewards you know um we have a five percent inflation rate which dictates how much rewards we all get paid in t fuel um because as i'm sure most of you know your guests know that it is a dual coin system um but this would be something that could be brought up to a vote do we increase the inflation to 5.5 do we lower it to 4.5 do we help scarcity do we pay more do we let the price discovery come up to where the proper rewards would justify? So there's 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 already, as you can tell, some heavily debated you know subject over that. So that would be something that potentially could be you know discussed. Um, yeah, and you know, the community would have some early. input. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, and the community would have input, and it's not yes. just top down. Yes, yes, absolutely. So so you look at it almost like you're a shareholder. Um, and I, I hate comparing stocks to <laughs> crypto, not, not, not because I, you know, they both have humongously great value. Um, it, it's just the, the decoupling because, you know, if you're a, a one shareholder, you really don't get to sit down for a vote. So that's where we start seeing some of the division happen um, into crypto where, 
you potentially hold one theta and you still have your your vote you know you have a fraction of a theta and you have a fraction of that vote you know yeah. um so i think that that's that's pretty empowering um you know it really reinforces just what it is that when you invest in theta that you're getting um there are some pretty big partnerships and you know you potentially will be able to weigh in on outcomes of protocol changes um, on a platform that, you know, is sort of the central hub to everything. So um, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be pretty exciting. Um, uh, I, I don't have too much um, information on when, and, you know, I do know yeah. that they're actively, you know, developing it and enough so that I can start my development and, for integration on the pool. Okay, great. You know, I want to just back up a little bit and why you um, or why Gpool kind of came into view for me, um, because I was part of the uh, the beta program and that's where we kind of met. Um, and as GuardianMonitor.io came out and I started to analyze some of the information. Um, I started to analyze what my guardian node was doing, and it certainly was not doing as well as yours. And if you want to explain to people what a little bit uh, better background on what a the 30 DMB is, having a low 30 DMB is really good. Um, mine in the test net was about 4,300 as compared to when I looked at yours, it was four. And so I know I missed a lot of T-Fuel um, just doing what I thought was best in uh, uh, running the, running my own Guardian. Sure, yeah, absolutely. So um, right, let me, part of let building me just jump in there real quick. Sure. Let me jump in there. George, what you're showing on the screen here, I see you've got it highlighted, is to let the audience know, okay. is that the G-Pool address? Yes, that is the gpool address. Sorry, guys. Yeah, that's the gpool address. So gpool, gpool is number one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's just important to point out that that is gpool what we're looking at there because I see they have a zero under the thirty D and B, which is pretty impressive compared to some of the stuff you've showed me. So anyway, I didn't mean to interject, but I just want to make sure the audience knows exactly what we've got highlighted there. Perfect. Sure. Yeah. So. So this um, this 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 site is just such a great resource. Um, it's why we've decided to you know help support it, and you know um, we have no ownership of it, and you know we we want to keep this as segregated as possible. Um, this is something that we were trying to formulate into our schedule to build, and it's almost like how it's great that we run the pool outside of Theta Labs. It's great that they run these stats outside of us to keep us, everybody in check and balance. Um, so what, what this shows is, is this shows how many, so that, that 30 um, missed, it's missed blocks. Um, and so it's 30 days missed blocks. So basically what it is, is, is how many reward blocks you've missed in 30 days. Now, if you take a look up right above our address that's highlighted, you'll see 19.1 days. Now this data has not gone the full 30 day cycle yet um, because we haven't had mainnet up for 30 days. So this is still only just 19 day. This is a 19 day picture here. And we're already starting to see a couple numbers creep up here. Um, so what this means is, is this means that you were no round. Now there's, I, I guess to make sure that there's a there's two different types of votes. The guardian node casts a vote, meaning they co-sign. Best way to say it is that they co-sign that all the blocks that have come forward are indeed true. So they watch the validator nodes, they make sure the validator nodes are doing their job and they say yes or no. And they do this on a very constant basis, every six seconds, quicker than even that we're seeing. Anyhow, they 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 say yes, validators are doing their job, they, they, they've made all transactions that are valid. So what we're seeing is you, and, and when you do that checkpoint, it's, it's every 100 blocks, so it's every 10 minutes. So what you see here is, is that every 10 minutes or about 144 of them per day are potentially areas where you could miss. And we're gonna see that, you see the one right underneath me, it's got a one next to it. And 
if I had to make a, a, an assumption of what that was, that was a, a gentleman or a, a user that's running Windows. And that was a, an automated <laughs> update. Yep. Yeah. And that right there shows that we have a little bit of education to still do and help out with the community. Um, so as you can see, we have a zero. And now that, that, that user might be only running one server or one computer. We're running seven and we have them distributed throughout the world. So if two of them either go down, a power outage in the East Coast, however, we're ready for however the situation presents itself, that we will make sure that we are in that block to get our reward. So, so you know, it's it's while there is a reward mechanism and there is some some profits that that we're all excited about making, it's important to realize that we do have a very important job, and that's network security and checks and balances. Yeah. And you know. You know, uh, yes, that means that the more people that miss, the more rewards that get shifted to a certain group of people that are, are online. But it also means that, you know, we need to educate and make sure that people are running stable guardians. So it's, it's, a, it's a crucial thing to make sure that it's great to see large numbers, but we need large numbers of stable guardian nodes. Yeah. Okay. Um... Now, hey, George, know. George, yeah, George, yeah. So all these guys, you ran a guardian node, I think, during the test or whatever, in your basement. Like you set yep. up a server and did. Tell these guys what your number was, because here we have G pool is a zero. So is that saying in 19.1 days they've missed zero rewards? They've literally yep. got every reward for every person that's delegated through G pool, correct? Yep. Yeah, and that's why I looked at things. My um, when I compared it toward the end of the uh, the beta program, um, G pool was four, and mine was about forty three hundred. So I looked at what I knew. I mean, I was running on on Linux. You know, didn't want to do Windows because it is just a nightmare when it restarts and not knowing when, where, how. Um, and I thought I was doing everything right, you know, redundant power, you know, uh, fiber connection, and I missed a lot, and I didn't know why. I know I had, you know, maybe an update or restart every now and then, but it was like, why should I be spending my time and energy, and if I you know, leave for a little bit and gone for a week on vacation, is this thing going to stay up? Um, and that's when I decided, you know, there's no reason that I need to run it on my own um, and and let G pool handle it because they know what they're doing. They have redundancy. I had one server. I thought you guys only had four servers. You have seven servers going around the world. Yes, that yes. Is, we, we, we visually represent four of them, um, but uh, we, we have seven of them um, going. Uh, yeah. it, it takes a lot of resources to stream, um, and some of them don't have GUIs. So, okay, great. And would uh, you, George, George? Let's uh, let's before we move on, let's monetize your forty three hundred, okay? Because that, that's going to be important for people to really get the analysis here, okay? Forty three hundred misses equated to how many? In that scenario, I know it was a test bed. But in that scenario, it, it equated to how many T fuel that you missed. You know, I think. I guess you. You want me to do the math real quick? Yeah, no? you, I, I did the math. Yeah, go ahead and you, you're going to be I, better I think, on the math than this. I think your number is probably pretty close, but I didn't think you figured out it was about uh, forty thousand T fuel, wasn't it? No, no, no. I, it was like it was about six hundred T fuel, but there was a there was a multiplier in that because during the testing there was what you earned and then you had a multiplier of 150%. But but even, you know, 600, oh, go ahead, D, you can, you can do the, uh, the calculation on that. Well, you know, the, the thing about it is, is that I'd have to give a, um, I'd have to give a generic uh, per 10,000 um, that you have staked only because it could probably um, give uh, away okay. how much yeah. you yeah. have staked. I, I think I, so, I, I did calculate. I could say your number is, 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 it's a little low, but it would probably be right where I would think for, you know what I mean? For what I, yeah. 
for what I know. But yeah, yeah, that's that's I, I have never done those numbers. That's pretty dramatic. Um, wow, that's unfortunate. Yeah, well, and, and and I looked at that and I was like, well, what was I doing wrong? And I I looked at my whole you know setup scenario and it was like, well, when I when I did background on G pool, it's like, oh, okay, well, I'm not going to do things that are redundant. I don't have servers and colos anymore. I don't want to go down that road because um, it doesn't make sense for myself. But someone else that's doing it, um, absolutely. Now, and, you know, I, I think that a caveat to this, though, is, is to make sure that people don't think that this this won't keep up like this forever, you know, to where um, yeah. there, there might be a, a time down the road here where rewards are so fruitful that that redundancy is not only something that people can afford without even thinking about it, but it's going to be something that they want personally because the rewards are that large where they don't want to miss them. So yep. we're only just starting the redundancy because I know where this is headed and I've got, you know, I've got a plan of phases and I'm just checking boxes at this point. So we're already in the realm of where most will catch up here soon. From yeah. from what I'm thinking, and you're now, you're D, leading the way. Correct. Yeah, and D, let me ask you this: When you say the words "fruitful down the road," are you talking about the speculation of the potential price of T fuel, or are we talking about the fact that actual rewards percentages can actually climb as well? Because that's something right. I don't know. Sure. So so um. I, I guess I, I won't really peg myself to a number, but um, exponential growth uh, is, is definitely something that T Fuel will have. Um, and so more fruitful, meaning, you know, uh, you, you know, there are some coins out there that, that try to adjust inflation and, and try to make rewards where they're comparable at this exact second. Um, but, you know, to be honest, the, the projects that allow price discovery to um, correlate to network security um, from what I've found um, over the years tends to also have the reward to its early adopters, meaning everyone that came forward. Um, a quick example is, is coins that I used to mine when they weren't even paying electrical costs. And now, um, you know, they're helping buy a bigger house, you know. So, you know, obviously it's a lot of rewards that, that do that but I guess I'm just saying um, it's it's something that this price discovery will gradually or rapidly um, depending on because you know this this has the element of platform support and uh, adoption which um, I guess just the quick little dynamics you know when you think about theta um, Theta with its two coin system is quite brilliant. Um, at first, I was a bit reserved um, until I really start running the, the models and in a sense of how would I create the system um, and, and then how does this one uh, correlate or uh, wait. Um, anyhow, um, with the dual coin system, what we have is we have um, nothing but um, pressure. We have, we have the motivation to lock up Theta. Yeah. Theta's job is to lock up and secure the network. Well, in, in a lot of POS systems, you get rewarded in that same coin. Well, so so there's a inflation rate that needs to be a, a, attached to that, and then there can be downward pressure. So if people want to take profits in, a, in another coin, and the coin pays its rewards in that same coin, there's some downward pressure on the market to sell to get your profits. With, with a, two, a dual coin system like Theta has, you can have downward pressure for profit taking um, absorbed and completely taken away from Theta. So Theta really has exponential upward pressure that I can't see except for people exiting their position. And you're gonna have to take into consideration people are exiting their position and they're saying, I don't want to get 20 more years of T fuel rewards on this. So it's not that you're just selling your theta position, you're selling all that fruit that that tree would bear too. Um, so I guess that, that you know, then you have, well, now we've got a, a second coin with all downward pressure. Well, but then that's where the platforms come in, where they're going to then buy, because they're going to need to use that as the use case, that T fuel. So theta has a use case and that's securing the network and T fuel has a use case and both have upward buy pressure 
capability. Yeah, and then you've also got all the speculators who got a ton of tea fuel for free who are saying, hey, I got this free coin. It's not worth too much today, but I'm holding on to that. So now what they're doing in essence without getting a reward is their, their, their tea fuel is somewhat staked, right? So it's, it's in their wallet waiting on price discovery. And uh, I'll just tell you this, uh, most of my viewers here know this, and uh, I don't know if George has shared it with you, but um, I've got one group on Wall Street that I talk with. It's very, very, very involved intimately on the inside with Theta. And they have, they have given me private for my group, and I'll share it with you and just ask you to keep it private to yourself. They've given me two targets on Theta Fuel, one for early 2021 of around $5. And they've given me a $60 target by 2022 on Theta Fuel. And they even went on, went on to say to me, that's probably about the most you'll ever see out of Theta Fuel because things will stabilize as crypto stabilizes. And so anyway, take it for what you want. I don't, I don't ever take things that people tell me, no matter how close they are to a project, and go, okay, this is it. I'm stamping it in stone. This is how it has to be. But just take that for what you will. and. Um, yeah, just add it to your kind of to your 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 notes. Sure, sure. I um yeah, I I, I can see those prices being um, quite realistic. Um, uh, I, I like I said, I don't like to hold myself to to numbers, but um, the numbers that I have seen um, when you're talking about network security and how much Bitcoin and Ethereum pays their network on a daily basis, and then you compare it, um, there's quite a bit of growth that there is still left to, to be achieved. Um, so um, just from that aspect, um, yeah, for sure. Um, I can see those numbers. Awesome. Carry on, George. Thank you. We, we, we like that. And so, you know, one thing that I think everybody needs to be aware of is that, you know, you are not doing this, well, you are doing it for free because you're not charging me, you're not charging Jay. But what people also need to realize is that you need to be supported. So, um, I, D, if you could just, you know, let everybody know, I don't have really anything to do with this project. I don't have anything to do with G Pool. I'm not selling this because I'm going to get anything out of it. I just want you guys to succeed because I want to succeed. I want to run, you know, I want to stake, I want to delegate, I should say my coins on gpool and i want you to guys to keep it as stable as possible so i want you to sell yourself on the patreon right now and and say you know why um people would want to uh, to join and support you because you know it, and the other thing if you care to share is you know how much or you can give us a range or none at all but how much does it cost you a month to keep um you know all the guardians running Sure, sure, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, I think that a lot of people need to, you know, I guess, like we were saying, we've got that that perfect timing right now. Um, it really, it really just goes into, you know, Theta has these great pillars built, and there's still that community to develop around it, um, which is going to hold governance and such, and, um, you know. This is where it all begins. This is where me donating my time, my resources, my energy into helping build that community, you know, rumbling. Um, that's 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 what this was birthed from. So, um, with keeping with that concept, um, you know, we, we wanted to do this in a sort of non-traditional way. Um, we didn't want to do it, but it just had to be done in a non-traditional way, um, where um profits wasn't something that our concern was it was just making sure that we had our resources um uh covered um as well as like you, you know i've said here helping out um fund other projects that's going to make theta that much more rock solid um so yeah so so the patreon um we we have the the the, the three tiers and um it's I guess I could I could give you the information that says that I am still donating um, resources to um, G Pool. Um, it's not um, something that uh, you know 
it's nothing that, that compromises security. Um, and it's not anything that I don't mind absorbing for still some time here. Um, it would be a great help if the community does come out and support us through the Patreon, um, takes that, that weight off of me and helps me free up some more capital for future, for future, future development. So, um, we just want to make sure that we're we're pushing Theta as far forward as we can too. Um, they have such great dynamics, and and you know it's a it's 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 a different it's a, it's a different crypto than Bitcoin, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it 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 can't help. They can't be helped by an adoption of a community like Bitcoin. Um, and 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 of course it can be helped that way. So that's what we are. That's what we're here for. That's what we're, we got the Patreon for. That's why fees aren't something that you know. And 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 I think there is something interesting to note about fees too is um, for delegation to happen, meaning for the the general theta holder to be able to keep their theta in their wallet. Um, we can't force a fee on people. So we yeah. made the decision at that moment that we'd wanted to keep the theta as safe and as and in everyone's hands as possible. And we knew at that moment, the fee was not something that could be enforced. And it, it might be something down the road. And, you know, we figure that will be when we probably start seeing some competition um, with pools, which is gonna be absolutely essential. And it'll be great to see um, other pools pop up. Um, that is one of the other concerns is that we wanna make sure that people do their research. Um, and don't just haphazardly place the same kind of trust in other pools as they pop up, but rightly so, if they deserve the trust, give them the trust. And, you know, so, you know, that's why we need to make sure that we have a website that is not something that is owned or controlled by us, um, just that we help support it. And that's why you see that Guardian Monitor um, also has donations that they accept and, you know, um, everything is done, you know, transparently. <clears throat> so, um, it's going to be essential. You're going to need you're going to need a lot of resources built out by the community that we are doing our checks and balances, and that's just part of the part of our job and our role in our future with Theta. You know, as as investors. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Okay. And um, yeah. you know. I guess I guess the the big thing is is when you start really looking down, and I know that for maybe some of these people. Or some of your your viewers, um, my my vision so far down the road um, might be hard to grasp. And you know, you know, I guess the thing about it is, is when I look at when I look at theta, I might be already maybe four years, uh, you know, looking ahead here. Um, it's hard to really backtrack and, and really think about where and what time frames I see these things. But I guess the big thing is, is that you know, I think I sh when I sh I was sharing with you. Um, you know what we'll see here as the success build, you know, of the project gets built out is potentially you'll see um, where your LG dishwasher and Samsung smart TV are you know used you know in a day-to-day -day communication with servers around the world and you earning rewards you know and I you know I believe I, I, I given you the example of you know, you're driving your smart car, uh, you know, and there's an accident ahead of you and your smart car with its GPS says, OK, well, we've got two routes around this accident. One of them passes the grocery store. One of them doesn't. If we're going to be late, we might as well stop at the grocery store. So I'm going to go and check in the fridge and see if anything's expiring soon. Now, this this is obviously some years out, but you have your smart car that instead of having to go and utilize all these servers and so on and so forth can jump from a, a Sony PlayStation to a Samsung refrigerator. And as it's jumping all the way to your refrigerator, you know, a dishwasher, you know, as it jumps, it, it leaves a small little fraction as it goes of, of a T fuel reward to for you helping out, sharing your bandwidth, like an Airbnb, you know, but for your bandwidth, it just skips. And as it's skipping, it's it's paying its its dues. So, you know, that's you know that's that's the vision you know that's the that's that's the big vision of where this could all head and especially in iot internet of things um with edge caching um it's 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 quite dramatic and it's quite uh, robust it, it, it could be a self-sustaining internet i guess in a theory 
on that when when we were talking that's kind of what you led to it was um you know i i, I think we're we're like 45 minutes in or so i don't know if we have time in this one to um to talk about where the, the vision that you see um you know do you want to talk about it now or do you want to come back and talk about it uh, yeah i've got no problem going either direction jay what's your feeling Yeah, I think, uh, you know, let's go, let's take 10 or 15 minutes more. That's fine. This is not too long by any means. As you know, I can be long winded. Um, and um, maybe not so much just Dee's vision, but um, I think a lot of people that are not developers, um, when they look at a project, you know, first of all, we know human nature is pe by and large, people are lazy. Um, I'm ambitiously lazy. That's why I'm in crypto. And, um, you know, so we don't take the time necessarily to investigate all of our investments. We hear the whole world talking about it. The price is cheap. We go, oh my gosh, I'm jumping in, right? And they never really know what is the potential of a theta. And so maybe if you could speak of it from that, that position and, and put it on layman's terms where people could get an understanding. Like when people say, Hey, what can you do on YouTube? Most people know what you can do on YouTube. If you asked me, hey, what could you do with Theta if Theta gets developed out the way the plan is? I really don't know. I mean, not as not a developer, not in touch with the core team, blah, blah, blah. I really don't know the answer to that. So maybe kind of talk about it from that perspective. We'll take another 10 or 15 minutes. And this has been great. Thank you for, for sharing. For sure, for sure, yeah. Great to, great to be here, and uh, maybe we could discuss a, another one here down the road as progression goes. Um, so yeah, so so you know we'll take a couple um, things that that we could go a little bit more in depth in and just just touch on here, uh, so that I could um, expound a bit. So so we have the the, the node cachers, which is another dynamic. It's basically um, uh, I'm sure you guys have. have touched on it or you can but basically uh, an edge cacher is just like another thing that runs on a device in your home um, and it's it's a secure way of sharing your bandwidth with people yeah there there's yours there on the screen so basically yeah. this this th what this does is this takes information in and it sends it out so really you're 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 jumping on the, this person's bandwidth this person's resources that they're allowing you to use and they're helping share and distribute. So what this does is this helps with, you know, not only the last mile on distribution, but things that we're seeing with congestion on the internet and so on and so forth. Um, you know, I don't want to go too too down too far down the inner workings of this, but let's just take this as a as as a face value that there are edge cachers and they perform um, repetitive data exchange. Um, with the um with its node caching capabilities so with that said what what potentially you'll see here is you're going to see many many people monetarily motivated to run these bandwidth sharing devices and with that you're technically making the internet 2.0 in a sense so what you'll have here is you're going to have a monetarily motivated decentralized internet and it's 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 very huge to make sure that all of those elements are in place um you know so what we are going to potentially see here is what you could see is somebody using an edge cacher um and i have a live stream of the guardian nodes and it's great for video um yes but what you can potentially have is you could have a static website on your edge cacher where people can click through so you potentially could have your computer sitting there with a website that you host from your computer that people are able to click on that has nothing to do with the real internet it's a complete separate network decentralized and monetarily driven um, to become bigger so you know you can't sell you can't sell a stock of the internet um, but there is definitely some monetary value there to capture so when we have something that comes along and it's it's in a non-negative um, affecting way monetarily motivating 
the next wave of an internet that potentially smarter and more sustainable, um, it's 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 just exponentially huge. And we could probably do yeah. a whole, you know, hour on that. That's why, you know, we're just gonna touch on it with that, you know. Uh, yeah, so it's, it, it, we don't even know what the potential is because we don't have that. And it seems like when it's built, then people can build on top and what that could what could oh, come out of yeah. that is amazing. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's I, I can't wait to see the things that I I'm blown away with. You know, I just it's it's gonna be so fun. Um, so many intelligent, smart people out there that are just gonna come and just wildly blow our minds. You know, um, it's it's really breathtaking to be honest with you. Um, it's exciting and you know talk about use case. I mean, that's I, I feel like a use case is is a term that that doesn't even satisfy what it probably will turn into here yeah well and and that's one of the reasons why i'm so excited about theta in general i mean like they are building something that has not been built and correct it's been needed yeah that's the thing is you know a lot of people don't realize or maybe they do that that this that this project was birthed from a necessity on their end um so this is a real necessity that was really needed that was created that, that the solution was created and we are all working with the solution here like, you know we all hold the solution um this was you know a company that needed this robust network um to deliver what it needed to deliver um so that's where this crypto is looked at in a little different light if you ask me um of how you know its roots came to be and why i feel like it is a perfect storm yeah well because because theta well um the parent company uh sliver tv has been around what since like 2015 or so yeah i'd have to look at that exact number i don't know it off the top of my head but they've yeah. been around and established yes yeah so they they were around and theta was birthed out of a, a real company instead of the you know where some companies are birthed right out of the uh, uh, the you know the the crypto that that's creating it. So right, the conceptual form, the, you yeah. know, and the conceptual form of, of currency can be quite dramatic, um, for sure. It's just great to know that we've already sidestepped the the conceptual part and are going straight into solution, um, which is which is just I feel um, so uh, dramatic, you know. Um, which is why I feel like it would be even exponentially um, more advantageous for the community build out, you know, in, in a sense like this, because it is just, you know, it's, it's such a, it's a, it's such a great project and the more involvement we can have and the more voting on protocol and, you know, this, this, this could be a very big crypto for the people built yeah. with the people. You know, um, that's pretty moving. You know, yeah, because it's it's really needed uh, in in today. Um, yeah, and, absolutely, and, absolutely. And just to go back a little bit, because I don't think some people realize this. I would say probably the majority of people don't realize this, but the edge node that's up on the screen right now, um, you don't have to have any uh, theta staked or delegated. I'm basically just running this on my desktop um, in the background and it helps to promote the theta network um, and so Correct. I'm learning T fuel just for sharing my bandwidth and sharing my power and this doesn't use a lot of both um, so you so, know if oh go ahead oh sorry so yes yeah, so I just wanted to touch because we're talking about the rewards too it's imperative to keep in mind that these rewards that you're going to be getting, you'll re receive while they're 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 great and they'll be fruitful. Um, they will exponentially shift with the value of T fuel. When you run a guardian node, you're just getting paid based on that inflation rate, and that doesn't matter if T fuel goes to crazy high numbers. You're still going to get the same amount of T fuel. Your value is just going to increase. On something like an edge node, that's where there will be a dynamic shift. Because it's being you're you're being paid for a service um, that service is sharing your bandwidth, and as the monetary influx of T fuel goes up, 
you probably will still you'll, you'll you will still receive the same amount in a USD pegging, but as a T fuel, you you won't. So while it is fruitful and it's going to be something essential to the network, um, I just wanted to make sure that the users understood that there will be soon a pretty dramatic difference between the two. Um, but yes, this takes no startup anything except for a device obviously but um, they're building these into smart tvs um they showed some video examples of that working with you know the companies um that they are right right this very second so um i think that that's going to be pretty uh, substantial when you buy a, a new say for example a samsung television and on setup you're setting up and you you're approving that your tv can be a, a node cacher and earn t fuel while you aren't even watching it or while you're watching yeah. it here at first and then soon it will be while you're not even watching it. Um, there'll be a progression, but nonetheless, your smart TV will earn theta for you while you're not even home. Um, so passive income is going to be absolutely crazy. And, you know, there are some projects out there that talk about, you know, helping bank the unbanked. And I think we've heard that a lot here in crypto. And I, I like that data potentially can bring passive income yeah, to... Can, can you know, can you small, share small, can you share yeah. the example you gave about Africa? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know that that's that's one of the the visions here is so so potentially you might have um and you know an African you know city where potentially broadband isn't something that is very readily available. Um, and that's what some of these crypto projects are finding that um, wallets are hard to communicate with when they don't have internet. So um, data potentially could make it to where there's a, a small cafe um, in the city that is is able to get internet for the first time because it can pay its internet bill on the rewards that it's earning. So you might have a self-fulfilling um, network where it brings internet to a vast majority of people, um, even on the outreaches. Um, so it's definitely gonna be an interesting dynamic um, to have potentially people that never were able to get on the internet, maybe even have internet that they give them for free um, because they're able to pay not only their costs, but you know, the more people that are using it, the more that they could then spin up more servers. And now all of a sudden they're making great money here and they don't even need to charge a fee for the natives to come and use the, um, the internet. So it's, yeah. it's, it's quite in, you know, empowering you know, in, in many different facets, um, when you really take a step back and just see where this potential, you know, can go. Yeah, that, that's it's the things that you don't think about that are just going to be created. And you're like, wow, I I didn't see that. I couldn't see it from the angle that I was in. Correct. Yeah, and like I said, I can't wait to see the things that that blow us away here. You know, um, it's going to be so exciting. Uh, <laughs> For sure. Hey, D, I had a quick question. Um, <clears throat> earlier, you were talking about, you know, this being kind of a 2.0 internet and yet doesn't run on the internet at all. Um, <clears throat> and, and of course, through a decentralized network. So, would I be correct to assume that, as you mentioned, as a possible example, you know, someone having a, a website that's running on this network? And yet it's not on the web at all. Is it? Is that also? Could I assume also that that would be kind of classified as unstoppable? Yeah, yeah. You know that that's part of the decentralized um, angle to to this whole element here. Is is that um, it, it needs to be decentralized? Uh, it needs to be open sourced, and and you know that's that's the direction that data is going as well, um, which is great because that. That in, intersects with the vision. Um, uh, it's it's quite breathtaking that all of this is actually planned and purposeful. Um, so yes, that that is an element that that there could be. And you know, right now the edge cacher is utilizing you know the the quote unquote internet structure that we have built in, so to say, um, with the backbone of delivery. Um, but yes, that that is the vision um that i've you know i've sort of been pervy to um is that that's that's 
that would be the end goal there. I mean, I wouldn't say end, but you know, the big picture. So even though, <clears throat> even though there's this uh, short list of validators that are kind of the traditional model where, you know, they may censor out this or censor out that, and they're involved in theta, you don't see that becoming a problem where down the road, then theta is stuck kind of having those same companies. This is the list of 25 here, I guess, or no, I see 12. 12. And, um, you know, I guess I'm trying to very politely tiptoe around that topic of, you know, <laughs> having companies like Google, you know, being involved here with theta. Cause I mean, you've seen a lot of, uh, you know, I, I personally feel that most of the people talking on YouTube don't have a clue what they're talking about. They're certainly regurgitating the news. They're giving their opinion. And sometimes that now becomes the opinion of a, of a certain number of populace. But that doesn't mean that it's correct or, you know, whatever. Can you can you speak to that a minute? You know how you feel about that from a developer side? Sure, sure. sure. Yeah. You know, that's the important thing to keep in mind is, is that technically Theta is almost two networks um, in the sense that the validators are, are functioning on the payment delivery system um, to pay everybody for their help in the edge caching system. So while the payment system is a, is a, is a very crucial end to that, there's also then to retouch back on, the other crucial end is, is, is our vote on the protocol changes. So there will be proposals that come along that potentially we will make those decisions and help make those decisions with our votes on how the protocol changes. And you know, they're, they're, the way that it's structured, the validators, they produce the blocks with the rewards and, and go forward and they'll carry a certain amount of weight comparable to every individual's weight that that is voting as well. So that's where the the community outreach and the community development comes in is, is us showing what the votes are going to be and you know a whole slew of us checks check and balancing the the, the encompassed networks. Gotcha. Because I see from a even from a, a staking perspective, um, I don't know where it is, George, on this page you have up, but there's a page that shows you the percentage of the validators and the percentage of the of the guardians, um, and it looked like that it was about what two to one or or something like that, where it was, uh, yeah, right there. So you've got 155 million in the guardian and 320 in the validator, that's not gonna play a role where the validators go, hey, look, you know, we're the majority and our vote, you know, is how it goes type of thing. And so that's I, I may be totally really, off. Well, no, that's, yeah, you're, no, you're, you're, dead, you're dead on. That's why it's essential that everyone takes, I, I'm calling it their dead theta, um, but it's not that it's dead and I don't mean to use a, con a negative connotation towards it, but, you know, their theta that's sitting in a wallet that they're not, earning rewards on and they're not really casting their vote either. So it's essential, as you can see, that the total isn't anywhere close to even half. I mean, it's close to half. I don't want to say it's not close to half, but you get what I'm saying. Um, yeah. there, there's only 475 million. There's, there's quite a room to overcome their 320 million um, and, and not as it is in a battle um, because obviously we're all working in a cohesive nature right now, but to protect the future. And that's where um, I really see that, I, I, I don't know what we're gonna land on with numbers, but I, I really see that with resources such as Gpool, that we could potentially get that number of total states, you know, at least 50-50, if not higher than that, where we're working with 88% or 80%. I use 88% because once we have 88% locked of theta, then we're at the tradable liquidity of Ethereum, you know, as far as what isn't locked. Not that it's locked for a dramatically long period of time, but there is a cool down. So, um, you know, once you start, you know, messing with the models and seeing, wow, if we do get 88% of the circulating supply locked, then we only have, you know, that 
hundred, you know, and twenty out there, and you know, Ether has one hundred and eleven million. But you know, you know what I'm saying. Once we get start getting closer to some of those, you know, liquidity um, or available liquidity out there, it's it really starts the model starts looking quite um, quite profitable. Um, but yes, um, I think that that's that's essential is the motivation behind everybody to make sure that they have their place. Um, and um, it just sort of goes hand in hand. The more that's locked, the more that people are participating, the more that are voting, um, the more secure, the more, um, you know, community driven, the, the, the future of data is. Yeah. And, 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 the, and the beautiful thing about, I was just going to say the beautiful thing about the pool is that, you're the guardian. Even if I take my coins out or half my coins, whatever, that guardian didn't go away. Or even if I come back later and say, you know, I sold mine and then when it went really low because I'm a trader, I bought back 10 times what I had, I put them back in and that guardian, that percentage you're talking about of getting to goes up. We didn't actually lose the guardian. Like the pool's always there. Is that, what, that kind of what I'm hearing technically? Correct, correct. And, um, you know, goes the other direction, too. Um, and, you know, you don't lose your your data or anything like that depicted on what the pool does. So we're, we're right. working together, but we're isolated in a sense. And so on a technical note, um, somebody asked George yesterday, he gave me an answer. I just want to hear if I'm getting the same one from you. Um, I put a fairly large amount of theta, uh, the theta into the pool uh, with George's help. And um, if I were to go and sell that, do I need to leave 10,100 coins in there on my Guardian oh. node or no, I could sell them all and then come back in later with whatever I wanted? Correct. As a matter of fact, as it works right now, that is something you withdraw the complete amount. So they're working still on partial withdrawal. So if you said, well, I want to keep 100 in there and, and sell, you know, you know, 20 theta, you know, obviously these numbers aren't real because you need to have 10,000 minimum, but you get what I'm saying. Right. Um, yeah. If you have, if you have, if you have 20,000 and you say, well, I just want to take 10,000 out, that isn't something that's a function right now. So, right. you know, we do have yeah. some optimizing and, and so on and so forth, but you know, we don't need to get into that, but yes, you can exit your whole position. We will still be there waiting for when you come back, you come back Perfect. and you return. Um, that's that's about as simple as is as it gets. Yes, it is. Thank you for clearing that up. Sure. That's exactly by the way the answer that George gave me yesterday too. So <laughs> perfect. <laughs> so this has been great, and uh, and I think we'll wrap it up here, George. Um, we're we're coming up on uh, what about an hour and fifteen minutes or so. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, I uh, can't thank you enough, Dee, for coming on. I know it's a technical topic, but you really did put it in terms where I think everybody listening will be able to really understand. And I appreciate your ability to do that. Sometimes when you're talking with a developer, every word out of their mouth can go right over your head, you know. But thank you for putting it in such good terms where, you know, someone like myself or even the listeners here can actually understand what you're saying. Thank you for your insight. Yeah, for sure. Thank you guys for, for having me. It was great that you uh, reached out uh, and we could line this up. Yeah, definitely, D. I really appreciate you coming on because I know in the beginning you weren't too sure just because this is crypto and I'm I'm glad you uh, um, I'm glad you joined us tonight. Sure, absolutely. Great. I look forward to maybe doing this again down the road. Definitely. Perfect. Let's do it. And D, you're welcome to hang around. George and I are just going to talk to the group a minute about a couple other topics, or you're welcome to pop on off, whatever you want to do there. Um, but uh, again, George, thank you for setting this up with D, and D, thank you for being willing to come. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you.